Tristan's going to open us in prayer. Uh, clarified 
about Sabbath. There are some things that Jesus did that if we, if we look at the letter of the law, for example, maybe Jesus wasn't following Sabbath law. But as we look through that topic throughout Scripture, we actually can see, and this is what Jesus did, he saw Sabbath for what it was, the heart of what it was, because he knew all of God's Word, and not just looking at that particular situation. So, the topical method, and I'm going to uh, have somebody pass these out. Uh, oh, you're right next to me, so I'm going to let you pass it out. Uh, so, I put this together, um, and it kind of just gives you some instruction on, uh, on how the topical method works. Uh, this is probably one of the most involved kinds of studies. This is one of those studies that can take you days or weeks or months depending on the topic that you're talking about. So let's say for example in the book of Mark, and I pull up my book of Mark here. So let's say for example in Mark chapter 10 uh, the Pharisees, it says, came up in order to test him and asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? And Jesus gives a, a, a question as an answer. Well, what did Moses tell him? And they said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce and to send her away. And Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote you this command. So what's one thing that we notice about this idea of divorce? Who wrote the commandment? say the Father wrote the commandment. He doesn't say God wrote the commandment. He said Moses wrote the commandment. Don't you think God instructed him to do that? Did he? Would Jesus have said Moses when he met God? It's a question. And it's not a question I want to give you an answer to. Question I'm going to let you answer on your own. And we're not going to necessarily look at this one, but uh, Jesus says, you know, he talks about divorce. And then right after, in chapter 10, verse 13, they were bringing children to Jesus, asking him to touch them, to heal them. And of course, his disciples rebuked the people that were bringing the children. Jesus said, let the children come to me, do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. And I don't know about you, but to me, I've got some questions. Because my understanding of the importance of children is a 20th, 21st century understanding. How many of us understand that children are very important? Anybody think children not? So, oh, I'll plan. But <laughs> anybody think children are not important? How much time, how much energy, how much money do we spend on children? It's not the way it was before Jesus came. So automatically I look at this and I'm like, well, what's the big deal? But then I can take a look back through Scripture and see what was said about children. And in this same section of the Bible where uh, it talks about divorce and it talks about all of these things, it also talks about a census. Who was counted in the census? Anybody know? Good men. All men 20 years old 
and older. And those people were supposed to bring the temple tax. They were supposed to pay this tax. Everybody remember when uh, they asked about Jesus paying the temple tax and Peter went out fishing and got the fish with the two drachmas in it to pay the temple tax? Only people age 20 and above paid the temple tax. If you didn't pay the temple tax, that means that you weren't supposed to go to the temple. You were not included. So anybody, and, and if we look at Exodus, and that's where that is, anybody under the age of 20 weren't really considered that important. They weren't even considered count-worthy. So as we look back in the rest of Scripture, what was happening with children? Do we see children mentioned a lot in the Old Testament? When we see the father begat the son and the father begat the son, is there a whole lot talked about as far as how children were treated, lots of conversations with children? Moses. Hmm? Just Moses. Just Moses? Yeah, not a lot. And automatically I look at this and I say, well, why do we value children so much now when back then in the Old Testament they really didn't value children at all except as heirs to the adults and your goal was to make sure that they grew up so that they could be heirs not a whole lot else so as we think about these topics as we think about these things we can read through any chapter of the book of Mark and we can notice things. And I know that you guys have already done a lot of this. And you've done a lot of noticing. You've done a lot of questioning. So what we're going to do tonight, and we've got eight people, so four and four will probably be good. Uh, if, if you guys are willing to let Trista stay into your group. I know it's very exclusive over here and everything. Uh, <laughs> there's more room over Trista's day for it. But what I want you guys to do amongst yourselves, uh, <laughs> sorry, I've been teaching too long today. Amongst yourselves, amongst your group, I want you to, to take a look through all the notes that you've already taken, all the things that you've already done. And I want you to pick a topic. I know, it's hard. You don't have to pick, like, the most important topic. You don't have to pick, like, you know, whatever. Just pick a topic. Pick something that maybe Jesus teaches, or pick something that happened, you know. Let's say, for example, when, when Jesus did the transfiguration, right? And we had uh, Peter talking about building tents for Moses and Elijah and Jesus. What were those tents for? And there are answers in the Old Testament. Or you could pick something very, very broad, like healing, as a topic, and start looking back and seeing where were these places in the Old Testament, where are these places in the rest of Scripture that talk about God healing people. Did healing happen a lot in the Old Testament, or was there merely a promise of healing? And if it was just a promise of healing, what were the promises? Does what Jesus did fulfill those promises? So, I want you to take some time, think about a topic, and again, it's going to take you a little bit of time. This topical study, and if you look at uh, what I just passed out to you, this topical study could take a long time. Obviously, we don't have a week to go through this. But, could get started tonight and then continue this study through the course of the week. So, here are the steps. Step number one, compile a list of words related to the topic that you want to study. So if you want to look at the topic of healing, you might uh, list some just words related to healing. Sickness, or disease, or evil spirit, 
All of those things are things that are mentioned in the book of Mark as Jesus heals people. He heals them of, of evil spirits. He heals them of sickness. He heals them of blindness. He heals them of deafness. Jesus does a lot of healing. So what we're going to do is we're going to make that list of the different things that we think of when we think of healing. Each of those words is going to be its own theme. Right? So blindness, for example. Well, how is blindness talked about in the Bible? How is deafness talked about in the Bible? How are evil spirits talked about in the Bible? And we're going to take a look and try to collect as many scripture references as we can talking about that topic, talking about that thing. And uh, I'm going to invite you guys, once uh, we get to starting here, I invite you guys, if uh, you want to send somebody over to the library, grab a couple of books, uh, concordances, Bible encyclopedias, things like that, you can go ahead and do that. I'm sorry I didn't get here early enough, I was going to pull those out. But then I want you to think about each of the scriptures that you find and just, just meditate on them, think about them, talk about them, discuss them, and see what truths you can find through those scriptures. And if you've come up with a scripture reference and you look at it and you read it and you, you feel like you, you come to the conclusion that it really doesn't fit that topic or doesn't fit what you're looking for, just you don't have to keep considering it. You could put it aside for something else. Okay? Uh, and then kind of group your references based on your topics. So uh, if we've got five scripture references talking about blindness, if we have six scripture references talking about uh, evil spirits, group those together, okay, so that you can get a picture of what it is that you're actually looking at. And then the final step, and you won't get to this tonight, but the final step would be to create a, an outline, to create some sort of a brief paragraph, a brief narrative talking about that topic. In the Bible, healing uh, is discussed in four different ways, and it's discussed this way, and this way, and this way, and this way. And just write your understanding of what that topic means. What did God mean when he said these things? Now, for most of you, I, I see your faces, and it looks like it makes sense. Does anybody have any questions? I'm going to let you guys go ahead and get started. We're going to, we're going to spend most of the time uh, doing this. You guys have about an hour. Again, that will give you enough time to get started. Uh, and then we'll get back together at the end, and I will encourage you to continue working through your topic throughout. So, how's it going? This table here, what, uh, what, were, what, was, your, what was your topic? What did you decide on? What was one of your topics that you decided on? With blindness, I think is what we got. Just blindness. Blindness. Okay. Um, How far did you get, do you think? Well, we wrote down the bunch of scriptures that we had. We got a lot of them looked at. Okay. A lot of them were what we saw in Mark. Okay. Um, what? It's all right. Um, it, it takes time. That's why that's why I said on the sheet yeah. it can take it can take a long time to kind of go yeah. through all of that. But again, this is one of those things where you know if you have a group of people that you meet with on a regular basis, you want to start digging into something like this, and you can get really yeah, you could really kind of get far into a topic like like that. How about over here? What uh, I, I heard uh, a lot of different names. Of things, what was what was happening over here? Evil. Evil. I think ours ours was too broad. We got bogged down. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you want to, I mean, evil is is a broad Satan topic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What evil specifically? Satan. 
Yeah. See? Okay. Still, rather a broad topic. It's <coughs> broad. Right? Yeah. How long? Yeah. How long do you think you could take, like, just putting your thoughts together about evil or, or, or Satan? Well, I thought Google said it better than anyone. Google <laughs> said it better than anyone. Oh my. He said it's the opposition to God. Okay. And that's exactly what it is. It is. Okay. <laughs> Well, it looks like you guys got a lot of notes. It's like you guys got a lot of notes going on over here. And again, this is something that, you know, I'm hoping will help you guys become, you know, deeper studiers of Scripture. Hoping that might, you know, might be able to get a group or two started where people continue on with uh, kind of what we're doing here. Uh, that's going to be up to you, of course, but it uh, seems as though none of you have anything to do on Tuesday nights from 6.30 to 8. So you can gather in somebody's house, have coffee, right. take some, uh, you know, take some uh, donuts or something, you know. Uh, but, uh, so next week, we're, next week we won't meet. Uh, our last meeting will be on the 16th. Uh, I checked the church calendar to make sure. Uh, and uh, next week we're gonna we're gonna kind of stray a little bit away from what we've been doing, uh, which is kind of where we have built upon uh, this kind of study. We started from just looking at the words, to looking at the verses, to looking at the chapters, to looking at the book, to looking at how the book fits in with the Bible. Right. So we've had this kind of progression. Uh, next week, I just want to talk a little bit about doing uh, some biographical studies because I know that we each have uh, people who are mentioned in the Bible who are really interested in learning more about. Um, mine are Daniel and his friends Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I really like learning about them, especially Daniel. You know, he has a lot going on. And Daniel's prophecies are mentioned later in Scripture. Uh, so really just kind of interesting to learn who he was uh, and the things that he did while he was alive and the, the impact that he had after his death, um, including, uh, some people believe, that uh, the uh, so-called disciples of Daniel uh, throughout the ages actually ended up becoming uh, the groups that made up the Magi. Uh, so again, it's just something very interesting that uh, I like to learn about. But we're going to actually, I'll give you a, a list of, you know, oh, I don't know, probably about a hundred characters in the Bible. Um, not that many. Um, but uh, We'll take a look, we'll, check, we'll try to look at how to study the people, because a lot of these people serve God. Well, how do they serve God? And if I'm like that person, how, how do I serve God? How do I use my attributes, uh, my reputation, my background, all of those things, to uh, provide a witness for Jesus Christ? So that's what we talk about in two weeks. Next week, you have the week off. Again, if you want to gather together on your own, you can do that. Maybe continue working on your topic or your theme or something like that. Uh, but obviously not. I won't be around, so I wouldn't be able to, to tell whether you were together or not. But uh, yeah, if you want, that's all right. But uh, let me close this in prayer, and then we will uh, we'll head out. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for Fellowship with one another while studying your word. Father, I ask that you would uh, help us to open ourselves to the idea of continuing to study, continuing to use all of these tools, all of these things that we're learning how to do in this class. It is just, class time is just so limiting. Uh, Father, I ask that you would uh, make exploring the scriptures interesting, make it meaningful, uh, and even uh, 
make it a little bit fun, make it so that we want to do it. Uh, ask that you would uh, be with everybody as they're traveling home, uh, get them home safely, and bring us all back together on Sunday morning. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.